Hi guys, it's Miss Lee again. Now that we know how to solve one-step addition and division equations, we're ready to move on to multiplication and division. Make sure you have your notes and get them completely filled in. Okay, we know that we can use the properties of equality to help us solve equations mathematically. We've already used the addition and subtraction properties of equalities. Well now, we're going to go and use the multiplication property of equality which says that you can multiply both sides of an equation by the same number and the two sides will remain equal. And also the division property of equality, which says that you can divide both sides of an equation by the same non-zero number. Remember, you cannot divide by zero. And the two sides will remain equal. In other words, again, we're just using the inverse or the opposite operation to isolate the variable. So let's go ahead and get some practice in. Our first equation is 10a, remember that means to multiply, is equal to 230. So the first thing we're gonna do is draw our equals line, and we need to isolate a. The operation being performed is multiplication, so we need to undo it with the opposite or the inverse operation, which is division. So we're going to divide by 10. And the properties, properties of equality say that what you do to one side, you have to do to the other side. So what happens is we get 10 divided by 10, which equals 1. You get 1a. And we don't go around writing 1a, so we just write it as a. a is going to equal, and then solve over here. You can draw your lines, I'm sorry. 230 divided by 10 is 23. So we have the solution of a equals 23. Let's check it. If I plug it in and multiply 10 times 23, does that equal 230? Yeah, bet it does. And then graph the solution on the number line. So remember, when we graph because it is equal, we need a solid or completely filled in dot. And this is gonna be 23. And then just do a couple of numbers before and after. So we're getting smaller, it goes to 22, then 21. Now going to the right, we're getting larger, 24, 25. Okay, the next example, number two, this is W is being divided. Remember this fraction bar means division. So let's go ahead and draw our line. The opposite or inverse operation of division is multiplication. So instead of dividing by 2.5, we're going to multiply by 2.5. And the properties of equality say what you do to one side, you have to do to the other. So we're gonna multiply the negative five by 2.5. And now we're ready to do the math. Well, if you'll recall, when you multiply, this is kind of like a fraction, right? Fraction form. When you're multiplying with a fraction, the whole numbers need to go over one to turn it into fraction form. And you can see, you can cross simplify. The 2.5s simplify, and they each turn into one. So all you're left with is one times w, which is w and then do your multiplication here. If you need to, do it off to the side. I'm gonna take out my decimal point and just do 25 times five. Oh, I know what that is, five quarters, that's 125. And then I go back, I have one decimal place. So I need one in my answer. So W is gonna equal 12 and 5 tenths, but it's a negative because a negative times a positive is a negative. Okay, so let's check our work. If I take W and I divide it by a negative 12.5, will that give me negative five? Whoops. So I wanna substitute my W, there's a little bit too big eraser there, with negative 12.5, and I'm dividing by 2.5. You guys, did you catch that? Okay. And if I do the division, which I can set up over here, 12.5 divided by 2.5. We cannot divide by a decimal number, so we turn it into a whole number by moving the decimal point one place to the right. We have to do the same thing on the inside. So my decimals now appear, and 25 goes into 125 five times, and because it's a negative divided by a positive, it's a negative five, so we solved it correctly. Let's go ahead and place our answer. We got negative 12.5, which is gonna be between a negative 13 and a negative 12. 
and I'm going to go one more to the right. That'll be negative 11. One more to the left is getting smaller, so it's negative 14. And now our solution has been graphed. Okay, if you feel comfortable, try the next two examples on your own. Come back and check your answers. If you want to work them with me, let's continue. Okay, this equation is a division y divided by 2. So we have to do the inverse or opposite operation. Instead of dividing by 2, we're going to multiply by 2. And the properties of equality say what you do to one side, you have to do to the other. So let's do the math. My 2's, as I showed you up here in example 1, they're going to cross simplify and turn into 1's, so I'm just left with y. y equals 25 two times 2 is 48. Let's check your answer. Substitute 48 for y. If I divide 48 by 2, will that equal 24? Yes, it does. Go ahead and graph your solution. Here's 24. Go two more above, two more below, so this would be 23. 22, this would be a 25, and a 26. Pretty easy, right? All right, last example, 18 equals 6 times x. It's the same thing, it's just the variables on the right side of the equation. It doesn't change the steps that we need to do just to isolate it and to solve it. So we need to undo this multiplication by doing division. We're going to divide by 6. We're going to have to do that to both sides. 18 divided by 6 is 3, bring down my equal sign. The 6 divided by 6 is 1, so it just leaves me 1x or x. So x is going to equal 3. Let's substitute it back in to check our answer. Does 18, is that equivalent to 6 times 3? Yes, it is. Okay, graph your solution. Here's our 3. We're going to do 2 above, 2 below, so 3, 2, 1. Then going to the right, we get larger, 3, 4, and 5. Determine if 32, 36, and 40 makes the equation x divided by 4 equals 9 true. Okay, so we had some examples, problems like this with the addition and the subtraction. And all you're doing is taking these values and you're substituting them for x into your equation and determining which one makes it true. So if I substitute 32, there we go, into the equation, 32 divided by 4 equals 8. Does 8 equal 9? No. Over here, if I substitute 36 into the equation, 36 divided by 4 equals 9, and that does equal 9. Check the 40 just to make sure. 40 divided by 4 is 10, not 9. So the one that would make the equation true is the 36. And now you're ready for your independent practice.